we are live and I'm so lucky tonight to have Amanda from Carnivorous Me here. Hello, Amanda. How are you? I am very well. How are you? Great. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited to speak to you because honestly, you were like one of the first people I saw before I started my carnivore journey. And I was so impressed yeah. with what you had done to heal yourself. And that inspired me. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy we're actually like talking. <laughs> Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, can For anyone who doesn't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you started and where you're at now? Yeah, so I've been on Carnivore a year and a half, the end of this month, I believe, close to that. And I started off at 360 pounds. I was having to use a walker to get around. I had 17 different comorbidities, three autoimmune, uh, type two diabetic, fatty liver. I mean, just the, honestly, the list of my diagnoses was very, very long. Uh, and in June of 2022, I ended up in the emergency room. When we came home from that, I decided enough was enough. I remember sitting in the emergency room and looking over at my husband thinking, I had made these decisions that had gotten me there and it was directly impacting him. He just, the worry, the, the just everything was on him. And I realized I had done that through my choices of putting myself first in wanting to eat my emotions, not deal with them. And then I started my carnivore journey. I just jumped two feet in and I have been going at it ever since. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I just want to say hi to some people that are here with us. Uh, Karen Harrington says hello. And uh, D. Lee says hello. Uh, just watching. That's a great YouTube channel. <laughs> awesome job on the weight loss. I was 370 pounds. I'm doing keto carnivore now and am 296. Great, 74 Ooh. pounds. That's awesome. Yay. That is amazing. That is amazing. So, um, can you, so I don't know, did you say how much you've lost? I'm so sorry if I missed that. No, I, I didn't. So okay. as of this past Sunday, I went from 362, I'm down to 251 now. Wow. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's over a hundred pounds. That's, yeah. that is amazing. Wow. I just want to say like, I've been doing this. I fell in November hard, but I've been doing oh, this no. since March and I've lost like 30 pounds. And I'm like, one day I, it'll keep going. <laughs> one day it'll continue. By mm -hmm. the way, you look so different. Like, like the beauty really comes out when you're doing the right things in your body. Like you're quite beautiful and you just look so different and so happy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely still experience body dysmorphia. Uh, when I look at my old photos and then compare them to now, I still see myself as that. 360 pound Amanda. Yesterday oh, wow. I actually went to a piano recital for my niece and I went into the bathroom and this is an old church building and I went into the stall, used the bathroom and I just, it occurred to me, I was like, I wouldn't have fit in this bathroom because it just, it was like from a, the fifties building. I would not have actually fit into the bathroom stall at my previous size. Wow. So I just, I mean, it's crazy. It, it's awesome. It's really, yeah. it's really inspiring because it's not, I mean, yeah, the weight loss and like feeling comfortable in your own skin is amazing, but the health benefits and the mental oh, yeah. health is, I think, so much, so much more valuable. And I know that you were going through some depression before, correct? Oh, I had severe, severe anxiety and depression towards the end there, like right before I went to the hospital, my poor husband would have to listen to me every single night say, I in the morning. I hope I don't wake up. And in the morning, I wish I didn't wake up. I was on the verge of committing suicide. The only thing that stopped me is I remember I had a patient when uh, I was in Minnesota and she had tried to commit suicide and failed. And she was very sick and ill. And I didn't want to be a burden on my husband for failing at that. And that oh, was wow. the only thing that actually stopped me. Or I, if I hadn't had that one patient, I probably wouldn't actually be sitting here today because it was oh, wow. just the memory of treating her and her situation that kept me from doing it. The depression, the anxiety. I had been in probably a year and a half before 
before I started carnivore, I was in an accident where someone ran a red light and T-boned me. I didn't drive for three years. Oh, wow. Like PTSD, oh, wow. anxiety. A lot of it was the anxiety over my weight and the shame and then the pain that came along with it. Like my depression was, it was like a black hole just sucking me in nonstop. Right. Yeah, I understand. And so I'm sure you you're on medications at that point. Yeah, I was taking fluoxetine. Okay. Are you still on medications or have you weaned yourself off or how is that since changing your diet? Yeah. So I spent eight months weaning myself down to five milligrams of my medication and then I stopped it. I had an extremely bad, I can't say reaction, but a response to completely stopping it. Right. And for about a week there, I became suicidal again. Okay. And it was, I mean, I, this was in the middle of carnivore right. and I did a little bit of research and it's like that, that last little bit is when you've been, I've been on antidepressants since I was 12. Wow. Like 20 years. Wow. Uh, it was just enough to just completely mess up my chemical balance in my brain. And so I actually went back to a full dose and I realized something, I will eventually try it again. But right. I still have, I always tell people, I still have a bank of Amanda I have to withdraw deposits from. <laughs> Once I get even lower, then I think I might take a year or more to get down to completely off of it. Ideally, right. I would like to not be on any, in any. Sure. Next year, my husband and I want to try to start having kids as my weight comes down. Uh, but I I really do want to make a point about this. Yeah. If people, if you're taking an anti anti um almost an antibiotic, listen to me, uh, any anti-anxiety medication, any antidepressants or anything like that. I let other people's opinions that I need to quit it now push me faster than I should have. And mm. if you still have to take it, it is okay. Like sure. I'm not ever going to let anybody shame me that I went back to my full dose. Cause honestly, I feel amazing. I was on that full dose and still suicidal before carnivore. Sure. So, you know, I understand. I think there's a dependency that your body mm -hmm. gets to those drugs and you have to do it properly. Like, yeah, you, you should get off of them when you can, but you don't want to do it. So it, it does other things because you're so the body is so dependent on it. And then that can mess with your mind. So yeah, I agree that you should do it correctly. And I, I I'm, I'm, I hope you don't mind me asking. These are very personal questions. I, okay. <laughs> um, I just want to look at the comments here really quick because we have some more. Uh, just watching. I was showing my wife here before and after. It looked like different people. Yes, yes, absolutely. It looked like a different I person. Someone, I had someone leave a comment. They said it looked like a mom and a daughter, like the before and after. <laughs> That's hilarious. You look so much younger, and your voice even sounds different. It sounds oh, different yeah. from your first videos. So I had a speech. I have a speech therapist that she watches because, okay. you know, I was in physical therapy and she said it's actually called fatty tongue where you get so much fat and stuff built up that it actually changes your voice. And so as you lose weight, especially for, I mean, this is talk about the morbidly, super morbidly obese people. It sure. affects more than anybody. It takes the pressure off. And so your voice goes back to what it should be without all that fat around her. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it definitely sounded deeper before. It yeah. sounded deeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's very yeah. interesting. Okay, well, mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, Cynthia, I have been preserving, persevering, sorry, from 2020. I can't seem to keep my mindset on track. What do you say to that? What do you, how, how can we help Cynthia? <laughs> Cynthia, go to the bookstore today by Tiny Habits. Y'all, like... Mm -hmm. If I could recommend anything and it's on sale, it is on sale right now. Amazon is like eight 95. It's like, it's usually 20 bucks. I bought 12 copies. Oh, wow. Is <laughs> tiny habits different than atomic habits? I like, so I've read atomic habits. I yeah. like tiny habits a lot more. Atomic, okay. or I'm sorry. I like tiny habits more atomic okay. habits. When I shut the book, I was like, man, these are great ideas, but how do I implement them? Like I shut the book. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, oh, I felt that also, way also. I felt that way okay, also. So, yeah. <laughs> Tiny habits at the end of every single chapter, it has you go through exercises on how to actually implement the tiny habit changes, how to uh, get rid of some, how to start new ones, all this. So we're, I do book club tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's is chapter eight, which is the end of the book. 
I have already implemented a handful of new tiny habits and it walks you through how to do it. I It's like having a blueprint for how to do it. I strongly recommend that book to every single person. It doesn't even have to be about weight loss. That's the crazy thing. Any bad habits you want to do, if you feel like you're stuck in your life, if you're somebody that I'm one procrastinates. Mm -hmm. Ever since we started reading this book, I literally look at my watch. I'm like, how is it seven o'clock? I've been going, 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 getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing book. Read it. That's what I would suggest. (laughs) Uh, I will. I will now. It sounds like a great suggestion. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Christina says, Amanda hugs to you for being so transparent. Yes. Thank you. you. (laughs) Uh, The champion within. Hello, ladies. Great to see you both. Hello. Thank you for being here. Um, LJ Jackson, I cannot get enough of Amanda and her progress. Such a beautiful lady. Yes. Thank you, LJ. That's very sweet. Um, just watching Amanda look into methylene blue. I'm not I guess, sure what that is. I'll have to look it I'm up. not sure either. I'm going to look that up after this. And Dee thank you. Hit the like. Yes, let's get some more people in here. All right. Uh, Mad how do you say that? Twitch? Mad Twitch? <laughs> Twitch? <laughs> Mad to itch, I think is what it is. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to do two itch. Okay. Amanda is very inspirational and knowledgeable. I love following her on the journey. I Thank agree. you. Uh, Kat Diamond, I always look forward to Amanda's videos. Kat, I always affo- look forward to looking at your doggo picture. It's so cute. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> it's adorable. Um, grateful Keto. Hello. And uh, Carnivore623, you two look like sisters. Oh, my God, that's <laughs> hilarious. I'm the older sister. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Even our glasses are kind of the same. Yeah. And Amanda, and she's my YouTube sister. That's who she is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm sure you've answered this question like six zillion times. But if someone was interested in starting Carnivore, what would at this point in your journey, what would your recommendation be for someone? Very first, I know some sound crazy, tiny habits, start there. The yeah. second thing is, is figure out, the big thing is to figure out what you want. Are you going to do hardcore carnivore? Are you going to do more like I do dirty carnivore? It sometimes fall into ketovore because I have a pickle here and there. Uh, what's going to work for you? If, if I could go back in time, I probably would have slightly changed how I started it. I went from cake one day to carnivore the next. But after reading Tiny Habits and also reassessing how every time I ever tried to lose weight, why I failed, I had this mentality of all or nothing. And what I suggest now for people is, is start week by week getting rid of things. You want to do carnivore? Great. Go get rid of all your junk food one week. Go week without that. Then get rid of your wheat stuff and flowers the next week and like taper into it. It'll make it stick longer. And the other thing is, is, and this is what people always say with carnivore, they're like, it's so restrictive. And (laughs) my response always to that is, you know what's restrictive? Being 360 pounds, struggling to wipe your own butt. Like literally, that is restrictive. Feeling depressed and anxious, not leaving. I wouldn't leave my house for three or four months at a time because my husband would get the groceries. And I, I literally just stopped working because I couldn't go out and see patients. I had such bad anxiety and I couldn't drive because I did home health physical, physical therapy. So I just stopped working. And, you know, it, that's restrictive. Mm-hmm. The other thing, too, was I find important is I'm never going to say never. I'm not ever going to say I'm never going to have another piece of cake again. I'm going to choose at least right now that I, I don't want any. Right. If I have some later on, I have a bite. Oh, well, not the end of the world. Carnivore is going to be a lifestyle, but I'm also not going to be a warden and put myself in a prison. That makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I agree. That's great. That's great. Cause like, yeah. What if you want that one? I take your advice, by the way, I don't have anything in my house that can like pull me off track. And even for my kids, we have um, fruit in the house, but rarely anything so bad. Like I have extra dark chocolate with no sugar in it, (laughs) which tastes terrible. But if my kids want something, we go four blocks away. And that gives me some exercise also. And I don't generally get anything when we go out, I'll I'll get like a sparkling water and they'll get whatever they want. So it's like a family trip to go get junk food if they want it. Like, so you can't, I can't get distract myself. And I don't, I feel like you, I don't feel restricted. I feel 
before I would have back pain, I would sit in this office here. I'd work during the day. I would go sit on the couch and that's more restrictive. Like, Hey kids, you've been waiting for me all day. Let's watch a Disney movie. Like that's stupid. Go play outside and create memorable things. So yeah, there you go. This is about you, not me. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, LJ, Amanda, what have you learned about not overwhelming the body with too much protein? I'm learning some people, I'm 66, take, are taking too much protein. Does carnivore provide guidelines? There you go. That's a good question. It's going to depend on who you talk to. Technically, carnivore is a high fat, moderate protein protein, low to no carb diet. A lot of people get that confused with protein spare, protein, wait, what is it? Protein fasting, oh, whatever. Anyways, it's a sparing modified diet where you do high protein, no carbs, and almost no fat. I aim for 50-50. I, I don't care if I actually hit it most of the time, but it's 50% fat, 50% protein. So that's like 120 grams of protein-ish to 120 grams of fat. But what I inherently eat during the day, I always hit those. Sometimes not, but it's pretty rare I don't. Uh, and honestly, it's going to boil down to your body. You, mm -hmm. as if you're 66 and you're not active, you're going to need a little less protein than if you're 66 and active. Uh, female, male, uh, postmenopausal, yeah. not young, you know, just all of these have a really important factor into them. So I don't love the calculators, and this is Amanda's opinion. <laughs> I really hate the calculators that are like, you have this much lean body mass. This is as much you need to eat. Really, they're kind of pulling that out of thin air to some degree. Uh, so I say, listen to your body. If you eat and you are tired, eat a little more fat next time. If you eat and then you're still tired, eat a little more protein next time. And we have survived for thousands of tens of thousands of years without having macros food calculators, people telling us how much we need to eat, nutritionists. Our bodies are really, really smart. We just need to let them be smart. Right. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Okay. So Carnivore 63 says, restrictive is not being able to stop eating sugar and refined carbs. Yes, totally. We At that piano recital we went to yesterday, one of the students, she has students from like 5 to eight, 80 or whatever. One of the older students brought a ton of cookies. Like, that's a great thing to give eight-year-olds because there's a lot of young kids. Right before they go home, give them cookies. <laughs> I remember yesterday I was sitting there looking over there, and it was like a Costco-sized tray. I'm like, if I took one bite, I would eat the entire thing. I, I just know. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's no stopping. So I agree. <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to be there. <laughs> one cookie leads to another cookie leads to another. Uh, mm -hmm. Grace. Uh, what do you say to family to keep them from freaking out about the way you're eating carnivore? Newbie to carnivore and Christmas is the first family gathering since starting. Thank you. Heart, heart. Love, love. I don't bother tell if I know people are going to be reactive to it. I don't bother telling them about carnivore. I just say, you know what? I'm doing a low carb diet or, you know, I'm doing a high fat, moderate protein diet. And I let it be at that. Um, if people are going to say something to you, Honestly, I hate to say this, but it, you're just going to have to get used to it and realize it is coming most of the time. It is coming from a place of concern. They just don't have the knowledge and they haven't looked into it. They've been spoon fed the whole standard American diet, food pyramid stuff, and that's where they're basing it out of. So look at it from they they care enough to say something to you, but just let it roll off your back. And I, again, wouldn't suggest even mentioning carnivore because sometimes just saying that triggers people. Right. So just high fat, moderate protein diet, low, low carb diet, however you want to do it. Great. Uh, also, yeah. oh, we move on to that. Make sure. sure if you're with a family gathering, if you guys are bringing food, bring something you really want to eat. It'll make it easier for not eating the other things off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Cynthia, thanks, Amanda. Audible let me download Tiny Habits at no charge. Hey, good for you. <laughs> Looking forward to learning something. Uh, Kat Diamond, the older we... Oh, I missed her other... The other comment. It says, the dog is Annie. <laughs> he has an Annie. I have an Annie. My Annie's Aww. sitting next to me. Oh, I'm going to... I want a dog. Okay. The older we get, the more protein we need to build muscle. Oh, there you go. 
Yeah, we need protein, we need in time, all that. Sure. I often feel like I want way more fat than protein. I feel like that most of in, the time. That, that may be exactly what your body needs. Like I right. do perfect on like the 50-50. Yeah. I can do 60-40 and be fine, but I'm fine with 50-50. It's all about figuring out what you need for your own exactly. body. Right. Yeah, totally. And um, yeah, exactly. I felt like it's helped me a lot with my hormones and I just feel better. <laughs> uh, Tracy, my why is what's keeping me going when I have cravings. I'm 71 and down 45 pounds since August. First, Ooh, yay! Good job, Tracy. Awesome. Well done. Um, I agree. It becomes more intuitive the longer you eat this way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can attest to that. All right. Or you can say, yum, I love meat the best. Yeah. Oh, for Christmas. Yeah, I love meat the best. <laughs> I'm just a meaty. I love meat. Yeah, exactly. I wonder, like, people are not going to be like, hey, why aren't you eating the mashed potatoes? Or are they? I don't know. Like, I guess are... it depends on the family. Yeah, I guess it depends on the family. I don't think my family would really notice. That's what what I'm eating. wondering if you like don't bring it up or people not that you're just eating. They're not going to really notice. I don't I don't think. Anyways. Hello, Keto Simple. Just want to drop by. Say hello, Amanda. You do good stuff. Thankful for you and our community. Yes, me too. Thank you, Thank you so much. Wow, we have like 68 people watching. So if you are Thanks. here, please uh, smash the like wherever you're watching and um, drop your comments and say hi in the comments. There you go. Those are all of my instructions. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. All right, here we go. Commies are evil. Okay, I like that name. That's hilarious. Okay, what about Harlingen and gelatin? What's, do you know what Harlingen is? And I've never heard of that. Okay, let's. we can't answer this question until we know what Harlan, Harlingen is. I think it's a city in Texas. No. <laughs> and gelatin made out of jello replacement? Technically, old time jello was made from ground pig's hoof. Like that's what oh, gelatin okay. was. Yeah. I don't I haven't had jello in so long. I have no idea what it's made out of. Probably not that anymore. Probably. But they not. have I believe you can get like sugar free or um unflavored, which I don't know if you want unflavored, but they probably have sugar free free jello. I may not buy the jello brand depending on what's in it if you're right. going to want something like that like i'm not a big advocate for sugar-free however if it's that thing that keeps you going do it yeah like, so harlan should all i can find is that it's in texas so i don't know but <laughs> please let us know what harlan gin is <laughs> okay so let's uh we got uh ron morales carnivore is the best yes i started few months ago and have been able to lower my triglycerides greatly. My total cholesterol is high according to established average, but I know that it is okay. Yes. Excellent. Uh, Jen says, hi. Hello. Hi, Jen. Uh, can anybody suggest uh, egg replacement? I have egg allergy. Egg replacement. Have you tried duck eggs? Mm. I have heard from many people who have allergies to regular chicken eggs. They do fine with duck eggs. I would say start there. And then the other thing is it's the egg white. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it's usually if you have an allergy, it's the egg white that you have the issue with. So eat the yolk, but not the white. Good advice. I think I've heard that also. Uh, Shanetta Anderson. I love listening to Amanda. Her voice is precious and I learned so much from her. So glad I caught this live. Yes. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> uh, question. Hello, ladies. Oh, Santa Claus. I'm into my third month carnivore. I had to lower fat intake because my body couldn't handle the diarrhea. Do sweeteners spike insulin? What do you say? <laughs> uh, for the diarrhea, if, if you do not have a gallbladder, I don't know if you do or don't, it does take longer to taper in, but that's the perfect thing is if you're having bad diarrhea, back off a little bit, give your body time to adjust, and then you can slowly increase your fat intake. Your body will produce more bile salts, not having diarrhea, those kinds of things. Uh, sweeteners, technically, yes, they do. <laughs> they What happens is the your body tastes the sweetness with artificial sweeteners on your tongue. It will spike your insulin because it assumes sugar is coming in. Uh, the long run, like over the long run, is it going to be a big issue? You know, artificial sweeteners aren't the greatest, but again, if it's that thing that keeps you going, 
And I really wouldn't worry so much about the insulin spiking unless you're having it all day long constantly. It really right. matters not in the short term of like the insulin, it's more the long term of how things are going. Okay, great. Um, I'm just saying hi to Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> hi. Uh, hello, uh, Shari from up the street. I guess this is your hi, neighbor. Shari. Oh, Shari, Shari lives Shari. up the street from me. <laughs> so just, I live in Colombia and I've gotten so used to speaking Spanish and the yeah. vowels don't change here. And so I said Shari because that's how I would pronounce it here. Even though I, if I would like speak English, it would be Shari. <laughs> okay, here we go. Christy, uh, Kelly Hogan said she ate SF Jello during her first sugar year. Of, oh, sugar free. Okay, thank you. I'm like San Francisco Jello, uh, zero carb, but it helped. It helped keep the sugar cravings around. Ah, yeah, sure. Okay. Do, do what you need to do as long as it's not being a crutch in the sense of it's keeping, like it becomes. We can replace our regular sugar with sugar-free stuff, and if it becomes a vice that way, that's not good. But again, right. if it's that thing that keeps you going. I have no judgments. Exactly. Oh, so we're up to 72 people. Let's get some more people in here. Please smash the like. Please ask questions. Please chat amongst each other. Okay. <laughs> Shanetta, what is your recommendation of my doing carnivore and have treat days on certain holidays and certain birthdays ranging no more than 12 treat days a year? What's your personal advice? So I like treat versus cheat. <laughs> if if it's going to be like special occasions personally and you can manage like the one meal and done, I think it's perfect. Like if you're going to do that and it's not going to turn into a binge or, you know, a week of bad eating, it's not going to do, I shouldn't say any harm, but it's not going to do much harm at all. Right. And if it keeps you 95% of the time carnivore and the other 5% slat, you know, let's look at it. Before doing it, a standard American diet, which it was like 99% bad food, 1% good food. There's a big trade-off there. Sure. Next year, Scott and I have actually talked about this, is for my birthday next year, because I will have at that point hit my weight I need to, I will have a piece of birthday cake. Normally, I'd get a whole cake and eat half of it. Like, I'm just not going to lie. I just know the boundaries to set. And I think that's the big thing is being realistic and honest with yourself and setting boundaries like, I will get one piece of cake. We will not buy an entire cake. Great. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. my husband, his birthday was in October and that was the first time I had had like a piece of cake since starting carnivore and yeah. it was delicious and it was only this big and I felt terrible. I felt so terrible. So I, that would be my recommendation. Just realize there will be an aftermath. <laughs> Once Your body is, will tell you quickly afterwards. Yeah, very like, quickly. The big thing is, is I'll tell you, after not having sugar and then having real sugar, you will be in the bathroom. You will. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Elizabeth says, I gave up stevia and no longer miss it. Good. And then she says hello again. <laughs> or I'm saying hello. We're saying hi. Hi, hi. Uh, Michael, hello. How is Chicago? Is it freezing? Okay. <laughs> uh Commies are evil. Hello, ladies. I'm in Southern California, head surgery, and I'm now bed bound. I'm sorry about that. I'm not able to cook for myself. I'm trying to figure out the fastest way to lose weight, more fat or protein, more protein. Yes. If you want to lose weight quicker, it will be aiming for more protein just because energy density, protein has less energy than fat does. However, I, I, I know you're bed bound whatever you do, don't make this about a race because then it puts like this ticking timer. And then we set these expectations and then we falter at the expectation. And then we get upset and then we eat bad. And like, it sends us in this like cyclical pattern of doing good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. I've done that for like my entire adult life trying to lose weight. Focus on being consistent. And if you want to do carnivore, just focus on the carnivore and being consistent. Okay. Get that underneath your belt for weeks. And then once you get past that stage of where you've become, you know, fat adapted, then you can start playing around with things. But I wouldn't suggest it in the beginning because it's already hard enough in the beginning. Mm -hmm. The first two weeks usually are pretty rough. If you've been eating a standard American diet, the carb withdrawals are real. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I want to say like, so Amanda's had amazing results in weight loss. And in eight months, I've only lost 30 pounds. And I lost most of that like in the beginning. And it's kind of stayed. So I always say, like you said before, many times, like the non-skill victories also. Like mm -hmm. pay attention to everything else. Like don't focus on only what you lose, but also what you're gaining. Um, yeah. And if you can't cook for yourself, I don't know, maybe a crock pot with brisket for several days or something like that. <laughs> Is someone else able to cook for you? That yeah, that's the real question. Who's cooking? <laughs> or just don't eat. People do that also. No. <laughs> okay, Betty Klein. I wore a, uh, I guess, a glucose monitor and yeah. have no yes, spike from artificial. Okay, I have no spike from artificial sweeteners. I suggest each person check their blood sugar after eating mm -hmm. artificial sweeteners. Yeah, exactly, and see how your body responds. That's good advice. That's the thing is, is if you want to, it's called in the nerd world, min maxing. Like if you want to min max and squeeze every ounce of lemon juice out of that lemon, yeah. doing things like that, like wearing the CGM and stuff, you can do that. But for me, I'm playing the long game. I really don't care mm. if I have a two point spike because Amanda had a little bit of artificial sweetener in the right. scheme of things when I care about the actual trend going down. Right. So don't stress, don't stress yourselves over those things. Like, we have enough stress in life. Don't add the stress. I just wanted to say you're so good at this. And I think you've truly found your calling, <laughs> helping other people. <laughs> it just came to me. Grateful keto. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. You might feel awful. <laughs> You'll know if it's worth it. Yeah. Um, hi, Amanda. We're, were your A1C levels high before carnivore and what was the number? Yes, I was diagnosed a type 2 diabetic. 7.1 right before carnivore was my A1C was 7.1. Last I had it checked, was it 4.9 was my last one. I am clinically and officially wow. no longer a type 2 diabetic. I actually spoke with my PCP and I said, because we did uh, my fasting insulin, we did my A1C, I can pass a three hour glucose test. Because people argue with me all the time, if you're a diabetic, you're always a diabetic. That's actually not true. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are type two diabetics that their body has been damaged beyond the point of repair. But there is, and this is to all of the type two diabetics out there, there is a way out. Even if you are an insulin dependent type two diabetic, you can still manage. There's a difference between curing and managing. Mine is gone. That means if I eat a piece of cake and let me tell you, I have, and I've checked my, I don't have any spikes in my blood sugars anymore. None. Awesome. Uh, Jen says, uh, hi, Jen. After I started carnivore, I'm a month in my skin start breaking out. Is that my body detoxing? <laughs> Your yes. body is going to get rid of a lot of stuff. Also, for people to keep in mind, our fat cells do a lot of things other than just store excess energy. They actually store toxins. Throughout your journey, you might have weird rashes, breakouts, and things that happen that's unexpected because the toxins, as the fat cells get emptied, they get dumped back into the body. Exactly. Uh, Rita, Amanda, you inspired me to be honest with myself. <laughs> uh, thanks grateful oh that's for grateful keto thanks for the advice okay let's see uh uh cgm doesn't oh. measure it, it measures your glucose levels oh, okay. insulin is a little bit different of a beast uh even fasting insulin isn't as sensitive as it should, well, it is not as sensitive as I'd like it to be. The test itself, it just measures glucose levels. So what happens is artificial artificial sweeteners don't spike your glucose because it technically, it isn't glucose. It's an alcohol sugar, which just passes right through us. Right. And I'm just curious, maybe it's like a brain thing, like a mental thing. If it does increase your blood sugar, maybe it's because the tongue and the brain or whatever, you know. It's a, it's a baby spike. Oh, okay. Like, if you're going to experience it, it's not very big. Okay. Scott Elliott, what is the best habit you developed to deal with stress and emotional eating? Scott Elliott. Y'all, this is my husband. Just so Aww. you know. 
Hi, Scott. So nice to see you. So cute. Oh, adorable. Uh, best habit if you're dealing with stress and emotional eating. Oh, honestly, walk in the dogs. Finding something that I enjoy that has absolutely nothing to do with food and talking to talking to my Scott too, but not everybody oh, has a Scott like I do. <laughs> uh, but oh, also awesome. beyond walking the dog. So some kind of physical exertion that's actually helped recently. A few weeks ago, I was like having a panic mode happen. And Scott's like, get out of the house and go bike the dog. And so I did. And I came back and I felt better, but it's realizing the big thing is I can't change anything two minutes ago, two seconds ago, two years ago letting go of the stress that has helped so much. I can only react to what's going to happen next. Nothing mm -hmm. in the future can be, or sorry, nothing in the past can be changed. That was a big help for dealing with stress. And the emotional eating is figuring out and under uncovering why, why was I emotionally eating? Why did I not want to deal with the feelings and instead swallow them? 12 rules for mm -hmm. life helped with both of those. That is another book I recommend. I still recommend Tiny Habits First, <laughs> 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. Whether you like him or don't, erase his name from it. The book is, it is a really good, deep read. It's hard to read in the sense that it makes you look inside and face the demons that look back at you. Oh, great. Awesome. I love Jordan Peterson. He's, yeah, he's great. Okay, so uh, your husband says... Second, Second answer is the right one. <laughs> Probably that I talked to my Scott. <laughs> Aww. Aww. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you guys are going to have kids next year. <laughs> I'm saying that for you. Uh, kids change your life completely. And it's great that you're going to be able to start them out eating correctly from the beginning. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jen says, all righty. Good to know. Thanks. I'm detoxing upside down the other. <laughs> totally worth every zit. It'll, it'll clear up. It will. Your skin will absolutely clear up once it's gotten rid of all that. Everything's kind of settled down. Um, this is slightly different, but hair loss, my hair was falling out by the gob six months in. Holy cannolis. I had to empty the drain halfway through the shower. And I realized tonight in the entire shower, I had one strand fall out. So your body will kind of, it has to settle everything and things will kind of go back to normal, but better. Just give it, give it time. Great. And uh, do we have any other questions? Yes, Scott is great. Aw. <laughs> I've seen a picture of him with you and uh, Jordan Peterson, actually. I think yeah. I saw that. Yeah, and he had this beautiful dress on. Uh, I'm trying to convince him. So I grew up in Las Vegas and my dad still lives there. Yeah. Jordan Peterson next year in April is going to be in there. I'm trying to convince him to go with me to see Jordan Peterson again. Uh, I'm sure he'll he'll want to come. I hope he does. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, commies are evil. <laughs> I keep reading that's hilarious. Okay. Yes, being a live is a victory. Family cooks what they like. Eating the same meat for a week. Uh, oh, a tough day. Okay, I understand. Since being at the hospital since July, it was easy to not eat gross food. Help with constipation. I think that's what that says. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I would suggest see if your family members would be willing to just cook meat separately. Like if you guys are going to, if, oops, if they're going to do like a, you know, potatoes and whatever rice, meat, that kind of thing, just see if they'll cook the meat separately. Also, I have some stupidly tasty and simple recipes. My favorite is the Chuck roast recipe. It is so simple. Your entire family can eat it. It is delicious. They can put whatever breads and sides on the side, but that would be a quick, simple meal. And it's done in the crock pot. Put it in the morning, two minutes to make it, literally ready by evening. It's, and literally when I tell you it takes less than five minutes, combined time, it's less than five minutes to make this. Wait, 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 wait. Chuck roast? Five minutes? Or you cooked it? Our no, no. I mean, I mean. Oh. I'm sorry, I should specify oh. that time. Uh, we cook it at uh, eight-ish hours. Oh, like okay. Two to three minutes to prep it, stick it in the pot. Mm -hmm. Two-ish minutes to get it out, blend the juices, shred the meat. If you haven't made that Czech roast recipe, 
do it. Do it. I, that sounds amazing. That sounds. Awesome. I had someone else on Twitter tell me about it. I'm like, oh, this person's crazy. And I tried. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, it's the best. Oh man, I love that. I love that. Oh, all right. Does uh, anyone want to tell us what your favorite meals are? Tell us in the chat. That would be great. And so, what is your what is your eating day look like? <laughs> I have bacon and eggs every morning, two eggs, two pieces of bacon. I drink half a cup to a full cup of element. I do the raw element. And then I don't, we eat around 10 or 11 most of the time because we have our own business and work from home. And okay. then for evening around five o'clock, I'll eat whatever. Tonight we are making rib roast. So I'll mm. have that. I'll have burgers with a slice of cheese, a uh, ribeye, the chuck roast. So usually my evening meal is what differs. It's always bacon and eggs, sometimes bacon and sausage, but most of the time mm -hmm. bacon and eggs. I found I do not like eggs, but I will eat them <laughs> because if I don't eat them, I seem to get hungrier sooner. But two eggs, two pieces of bacon last me all the way up until five o'clock. Wow. I eat a lot more than that then, <laughs> but I eat the same breakfast. I just happen to eat more. Maybe that's why I don't lose weight because I just eat. I just love food, <laughs> but at least it's not the cookies and cheesecake anymore. <laughs> I think I do like four eggs and like five pieces of bacon, but I haven't eaten since breakfast also. And it's already like, oh my gosh, it's almost eight. Uh, guys, speaking of which, I'm going to be, um, what is this? I am going to be considerate of Amanda's time. We've got maybe 10, 15 more minutes left. So make sure you put your questions there so we can get them answered. All right. Uh, D Lee ribeye, uh, cat diamond, major check roast tonight. Oh, wow. How yummy. did it turn out cat? I'm so curious. Yeah. Let us know you did. Uh, chuck roast is good. Yes. Yes. Uh, my favorite meal is burgers with cheese on top. Oh, that sounds so good. Now we're talking about food. Now I need to eat dinner. <laughs> 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 Hands down, chuck roast is so tasty with. It's with satch. Okay, I call you. it Sasquatch seasoning. Yeah, it's, yeah. From, <laughs> it's from Redmond's. Usually I don't like pre-mixed spices because they have crap in them or they mm -hmm. don't taste very good. We love the wasatch. Nice. I'll, I'll have to look at that. I mean, I. When I was visiting home, when I was visiting the U.S., I did get some stuff, but I even got a little thing of Redmond's. <laughs> I, don't have the, yeah, I don't have that stuff here, but I'll have to check it out next time I go. I just ate sick duck aids fried in lamb fat. Wow, that sounds very yummy. I must say I prefer using tallow, but it's what was in my frying pan from lamb chops. There you go. There you go. Carnivore is so easy. It's so it easy. Just, like, oh, yeah, the fat from yesterday. Use it. Okay. Uh, oh man, smash burger with smoked gouda and bacon also sounds amazing. Um, speaking of which, what's your thoughts about cheese? I treat it like a condiment. Okay. Uh, the harder cheese are better. Not that we don't eat some soft cheeses, but there's more lactose, i.e. more carbohydrates in softer cheeses. I just, I have heavy cream in my coffee every morning and I just, I don't have cheese daily, but intermittently. I have experienced when I've eaten a lot of cheese that it does stall weight loss. Mm -hmm. So as I said, I treat it like a condiment at this point in time. Okay. It's like a binge factor for me. So it's like one of the things if it, I can't really, it's like a treat. That would be like a treat for me or else it becomes a, a problem. <laughs> well, there's one of the ladies that comes to our meetup. Cheese just absolutely sets her off. She just binges on it. I can walk away from it. No, I can't. I'm like, you're, you're this lady. I will just, and then just pretend, like, yeah, then I'm pretending I'm like doing keto and really I'm just binging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Kat Diamond says it was really good. Elizabeth, oh, good. she says, what about occasional red wine? You're going to constantly, so occasional to me would be a few times a month. Personally, that is way too much. If you had a red wine on a super special occasion, an anniversary or birthday, again, you're probably going to feel like crap afterwards, but it's not going to, in the scheme of things, it's, it'll be all right. 
But if you're having it once a week and things like this, even twice a month, you're going to just be constantly infusing yourself with a crap ton of sugar. Alcohol isn't good for us, but a crap ton of sugar from the wine. And you're going to be checking yourself out of ketosis, which then you have to go through carb withdrawals and you're going to be bouncing back and forth. And let me tell you, I've done that. It is not a good place to be. You feel like crap most of the time because you're going through mm -hmm. carb withdrawals and you're in ketosis. Then you eat bad and it's like, it's not a good place to be. There you go. Um, Christina, will you ever come to the East Coast for a meetup? I do want to come to the East Coast. My mom lives in Virginia, and I would love to, if we could ever get big enough and have somebody sponsor it, I would love to just, like, go to different places and do meetups. <laughs> you will. You will. You, you can just... Whatever your word is, like manifest or put it out there or whatever, it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, hard cheese have more K2. That's like a vitamin. Is that is that potassium K2 or is that something else? I sh sorry. Sorry for sounding <laughs> uneducated. <laughs> uh, Christy Brown, my mother-in-law lives with me and is appalled that I cook leftovers and griefs. She's type 2, DM, morbidly obese, etc. I'm sorry. Just start cooking for her. Get all the food out of your house that she shouldn't be eating. You're going to do her a favor. <laughs> to, you know, to people who have kids or others in the house, you know how you slowly do it? You just let the bad food run out. Let's say you like buy five mm -hmm. things of junk food. Mm -hmm. Let one of them run out, only replace it with four. And then the next time only replace it with three and then two and then one. And before they even realize it, it's just not going to be in the house. You just without ripping the bandaid off from them eating a lot of sugar to none, just slowly start pulling right. that stuff out of the house before they know it, they won't even realize it. Right. Right. Like for my kids, like we have fruit, uh, rice is very part of the Colombian culture. They like it, mm -hmm. but we'll even cook it and it'll be like two days of rice. And I don't know. I, I never liked that. So it's not something I'm like, Oh no, but we don't have a lot of junk in the house. And that's so helpful. Like don't, it is so it, helpful. Yeah. Just, you know, fruit, I'm not a big fruity, so that doesn't bother me, but yeah, I, I agree. Just like slowly get it out of the house and then don't buy it anymore. Whoever does the shopping. I hope it's you. Okay. Uh, Renee, dang it. Sorry. I missed the live. We'll watch replay. I told her we're still here for a few more minutes. <laughs> uh, Christina is in Maryland. There you go. Nice. Oh, and back to the I've wine. Never been. It's uh, it's close to Virginia. It's right next it door. It is. I think. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth says Christmas only. There you go. There you go. Uh, let's see. Let's get the last questions here. Uh, so, what does your carnivore menus look like on a regular basis that helped you on your weight loss journey? Making it as stupidly simple as possible. I've never. I can cook, but I'm not like moved by cooking. If that makes any sense. I like easy. Scott likes easy. That is our menu. Easy. Burgers with cheese, uh, sausage, uh, steak, chuck roast, you name it, easy. I do some more complicated things like pork carnitas, but really, even then, that's pretty easy. It's slow cooked. Spices, slow cooked. Boom, you're done. So making things as simple as humanly possible, I found makes it easier because less dishes, less stress, less time in the kitchen. Right. Oh, yeah. You save so much time on carnivore. Crazy. Oh I, I remember a dinner party that I had last year and all I did all day was buy food, cook, and then eat. And that's all like the entire day. And now it's like, you want to come over for food? Okay, you're having eggs. <laughs> No, <laughs> I, used to, I used to make this delicious uh, homemade Alfredo with sun-dried tomatoes. And I would make oh, wow. the sun-dried tomatoes from scratch, everything from scratch, five or six hours involved in this. It was ridiculous. I mean, the meal was good. Sure. But and how 15 long minutes now. <laughs> how long did it take you to eat it <laughs> after cooking all day? Minutes. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's so much easier cooking on a carnivore diet. I'll answer this, mm -hmm. um, her question. Uh, yeah. I eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I agree, simplicity makes it so easy. Makes it so easy to stick to. You're not trying to, like on keto, you want to get into all these delicious, like like keto, what people call keto now, all these different recipes and all these things. And it's just so much more complicated. 
It is. And you think you'd get bored, but you don't. You just switch up the cut of meat and things yeah. like that. Change the spices if you are if you do spices and you just, it's not difficult. And yeah, I don't exactly. really ever get bored. Me neither. I never get bored of what I eat. Uh, Scott, wise words from your husband. Consistency. Eat same time every day. Easy to cook and clean up. Making eating and planning meals a habit really helps transition snacks like cheese or bacon till habit is formed great i love that that's awesome um if i like showed you my fridge right now it would look ridiculous it's literally like a chunk of meat and like some pork belly and then there's eggs on top of the fridge <laughs> simplicity okay. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I will say a habit Scott and I have is every single morning, it's what are we going to have for dinner? Because we already know we're having bacon and eggs for breakfast. That way we can take the meat out and thaw it throughout the day. There is no going out to eat. No, what are we going to eat 10 minutes before I'm starving and hangry? We've already decided in the morning and the plan's already been set. So that's what he means by like a habit of doing it. Do not right. let yourself get to the point where you're hangry because going right. and getting something, it's too easy then. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's too easy to just find the cheap, easy thing to put in your mouth. Uh, oops, K2. It's a vitamin that transport calcium to the bones and the muscles for use. It also eroded coronary plaque and places calcium bones. I can get know that. from meat and eggs. Thank you. Thank you for telling us. Um, and also your body makes K2 from K1 clotting vitamin, but you get most K2 from animal products. Good to know. So many good things when you eat meat. If you're in Chicago, you'll find the best carnita rest carnitas restaurants. I'm not, I'm not in Chicago right now. I do. I hate this time of year in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> it's really cold. Uh, I cat, I plan a menu every week based on what's on sale. The stores makes it very easy. Great. Um, I will say like you can do carnivore for so cheap. Like when I went home, uh, before I fell off my wagon, uh, I went to Costco and it was like a huge piece of brisket, lots of ground beef, eggs, bacon, butter. And it was like 120 bucks and it was all of this food. And that was for me and my kids. And I'm like, you could easily do carnivore for so cheap. I just, I know it from here, my perspective of here, I just wanted to say ladies and gentlemen, it's cheap. Uh, hello. I'll see you tomorrow night. I'm going to be in a live stream with her tomorrow night. <laughs> okay. I would get bored, but I guess I might mean I'm not really hungry. Then if I'm hungry, I'll eat the meat. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Anytime I'm like, Ugh, I don't want that. I'm like, you know what? I'm just not going to eat because if mm -hmm. I was really hungry, I wouldn't complain about whatever was put in front of me. Yeah, exactly. Like animals. They'll just eat what you give them when they're hungry. <laughs> not saying we're animals, but I was just thinking of like, you know, your dog, when it's hungry, it'll eat the food that you give it. And if it's yes. not, it won't. <laughs> uh, yes, Amanda, I'm always in the routine of unthawing a day or two ahead each morning. I double check that something is ready to go for dinner. And there you go. Man. Okay. Uh, shout out to Scott being involved in his wife's journey and doing this himself. So awesome. Yay. Is your husband like my husband who's literally been skinny his entire life and never had any issues at all with his body? <laughs> Scott, when he was in the Navy, he was 130 yeah. pounds. Oh, wow. And he's 5'10", so he's okay. not short. Right. Uh, he gained a little bit of weight, and I think that was just more because my binge eating and I was stressing him out and him not expressing that because I was stressed out. He put on about 25 pounds. And that was the most <laughs> the man had ever weighed in his entire life. He lost all of it within like six months. It sure. was all gone. Sure. Yeah. So now he's back to his skinny self. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My husband. Um, so when I went to the U.S. and I came back, he was like cooking even less, like just like a day where he would just eat boiled eggs or something because he doesn't like cooking. And I'm like, how are you like even skinnier? But not like not like skinny sickly, but like you could see all of his muscles. And I'm like, Wow, carnivore is kind of amazing. <laughs> Even for like a skinny person or just a muscly person. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Probably eating that way also helps. Wow, we have 100 people here. Guys, we have six minutes left. You have six minutes to say your piece in the comments and we will put them up. All right. Uh, it was a challenge to reach 140 until my late 30s. Oh, wow. Gosh. I just want to say men's bodies are so different than women's bodies. 
like way <laughs> you wouldn't know from looking at me but i'm 180 pounds i started at 209 almost 210 pounds and i'm like 184 as of this morning maybe i'll get down to like 177 and you wouldn't notice because it's just kind of in the butt <laughs> and in the hips so you can't tell on camera but it's like we have to do so much more effort because our bodies want us to have that fat i guess to make babies yes. And I'm, I'm 40. So ladies and gentlemen, do this, eat healthy, starting young. <laughs> Your body yeah. will appreciate it a lot more. Um, let's see. Uh, my husband is just like that skinny, eat whatever and still skinny. Yes. Yes. Like my husband, he would say he's carnivore, but then he'll go have an ice cream cone. He's like, oh, I'm going to get an ice cream cone. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine. It doesn't like whatever. It, I don't have a problem with it. It doesn't affect me. Uh, Lillian G, did you have liver disease? Me, no. I had, I had fatty liver. I was almost in stage two fatty liver. I no longer have fatty liver. So it's gone. It's gone. It's, it's quite amazing when you do the mm -hmm. right things for your body, that it'll just fix itself. Um, just coming over here to give some love on both channels. Oh, she must be on yours and then mine. Thank you so much. I love that. Thank you. And uh, D, Lee. Yay, Scott. <laughs> and Lillian G says, wow, really? Yeah, that's awesome. I've, I have my, I actually need, I'm due for blood work. I shared all my blood work uh, before carnivore, during carnivore, throughout my journey. As I said, I'm, I'm like a month behind, but I need to, Scott's hounding me. I need to go next week and get my blood work done. But I share all that. I shared on my website, the carnivorousme.com. And then also I do videos. If you kind of dig through the videos, I do video updates about it too. Great. Um, let's see. Christy says, uh, Dr. Berry says, if we don't want a boiled egg or a cold burger patty from the fridge, we aren't hungry. Ah, find something else to do. But if we want, uh, if we want eat it and it was good, we're hungry. Ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, good advice. A, something I discovered for myself is if I don't want it, it's like my brain's having a two-year-old tantrum. Like, I don't want that. I want something else. <laughs> and so I know I'm not actually hungry. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, oh, can, I'm going to do a shameless, uh, plug for myself. Cause there's 96 people here. Make sure y'all go and subscribe to me. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, we got a few minutes. I'm going to rapidly go through these comments. Uh, April, I'm 47 pounds down since June on current. We're feeling so much better. Ooh, Yay. Congrats. Good job. This is my friend, Tom. Do you know Tom, the frugal prepper? He's awesome. <laughs> Okay, he also, I think he's doing keto now. He was doing carnivore, but he's doing keto, and that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, we're going good. We're doing good, Tom. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I really should learn what these things mean. My N-A-F-L-D is 100% gone. It's what is that? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, thank you. Good job. <laughs> good job. 38 kilos, so that's like a lot. A lot. That. 38 times 2.2 that's 83 pounds that's amazing reverse type 2 diabetes and all the chronic chronic metabolic ailments yes start a youtube channel <laughs> if you don't have one <laughs> how much butter do you eat daily uh i eat more fat in my meat like ribeye chuck roast like i'll add a little bit of butter to the chuck roast so a third of a stick or less, but that would also, I would add in probably some of the fat from the meat to that. So okay. not a lot of butter per se. I try to aim for just animal, like from the meat fatty cuts, or we make our own tallow. So like mm -hmm. when Scott makes the chuck rose, cause he's actually the cook in our house now, uh, when he makes it, he'll add like two tablespoons of tallow to like a three pound chuck rose. So I get my, I get fat that way too. Great. And um, I have butter and the best if I just cook eggs with butter, but I know you can't overcook the butter. I've learned that yes, from you. We'll burn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I could get into eating a lot of butter. So I just, it's just good with the eggs. There you go. And hello, Nicole. Thank you. Do you know Nicole? She's I, I do. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> just making sure, <laughs> you know, my friends also. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you both are looking beautiful. Oh, <laughs> thank you. How do you know if your body isn't missing natural pigment acquired from fruits? Hmm. I think I look normal. What about you? 
so I'm not exactly sure what you mean by this per se, because when we eat the fruit, all of it gets broken down by the acid and in the stomach, there is no color pigmentation. So if, like if you eat a red apple, that it's going to change your skin pigmentation, unless you have an aller allergic reaction, then it's not pigment. It's just your body reacting. So maybe if you want to expand on that a little more, I can answer a little better. Okay, great. Uh, Lillian G, we did mention this earlier, but if you want to, you want to just briefly go over how you would start. <sighs> I have a YouTube video actually about this. Great. It is the Carnivore's Beginner Guide, and I went through and kind of laid it all out there. But the biggest thing is drop the sugars, drop the junk food, eat meat. If you want to taper into it, I'd eat meat and vegetables. And then over time, you slowly start removing the vegetables because the whole point with Carnivore is to get down to meat. And if you're going to do a little dairy, because there's oxalates and oxalates and vegetables that cause inflammation. And what you might do fine with, I don't. Like, I had bell peppers the other day, which actually made me feel really, really bad. Mm -hmm. um, so that literally that's how you start is you start weeding out that. Nothing with seed oils, sugars, wheats, plants, mm -hmm. other than I do do spices. That's my dirty carnivore. And, and coffee. I do coffee. Yes. That's my I do plant coffee. of choice. <laughs> I put your video link in the comments. I don't, I don't, I hope it. The video you just mentioned, I hope it like can be clickable. All right. Tom says, I'm doing very meat heavy keto with days of fasting in between. I'm trying to get another 15 pounds off to help my uh, blood pressure. Great. Yeah. That'll do great. Um, and Christy says, meeting wellness. We'd love to have Amanda on the lioness meeting. Uh, so she does a live in, with three other lionesses. And I will be seeing just, her tomorrow just night. Just email me. Just email me because... <laughs> I get crazy. Aaliyah would be able to expand on this. It's sometimes my schedule is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But just email me and I try to, I try to be as accommodating as I can. And you're wonderful and no worries. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jade girl, I was doing well with carnivore and then got pregnant. It's been so hard to back, get back on carnivore. I can I'm, see that. Yep. Yeah, yep. Pregnancy is rough. <laughs> Jade. Go buy tiny habits. Start there. I'm telling y'all, you're going to hear me say this probably for the rest of ever. Read tiny habits. If you are struggling and you just can't seem to get traction with carnivore or moving more or whatever, read tiny habits. It is the blueprint and it teaches you how to start these habits so you're not feeling like you're floundering constantly. There you go. Um, let's see. Good advice on weaning, Amanda. Okay. It says, I read that pigment contributes to your hair. Maybe it's not mm. true. Just a question. No. <laughs> you can get everything that you need from me. My hair, you may have missed this earlier. Before falling out, before carnivore, first six months falling out, I took a shower today. One strand fell out of my hair. My hair is very, very healthy and finally starting to grow back from years of falling out. Wow. It looks great. It looks great for sure. Um, let's see. I just want to, this is, what do you think of this? Is carnivore better than vegan? Shanita. <laughs> yes. <laughs> vegan. If I'm not going to judge anybody, if they want to do it and they're an animal advocate, each their own, right? Each their own. But here's the thing with veganism. Okay. Yes, I know. I know you're cute with <laughs> veganism. You do not get bioavailable protein that you get from carnivore. Meat, if you go to the USDA website and you look at the ingredients and nutrients in meat, most, if not 99.9% .9 of the vitamins, it says on the label, not tested, not tested, not tested. So it doesn't measure for calcium or potassium or anything in these meats because vegans argument always is, is, well, you're not getting all these nutrients. No, the USDA website, the USDA just never tested the meat for it. There mm -hmm. have been some individual labs that have shown that there is definitely full amount of array of nutrients in the meat we consume. Secondly, if you're a diabetic, veganism is lots of carbs, even if you do clean veganism. Yeah. That's, ice cream is vegan. Ice cream. Well, no. <laughs> it's gotten... Coconut ice cream. Sherbert. <laughs> Sherbert. Sherbert has no milk. Yeah. <laughs> Sherbert would be <laughs> vegan. 
anyways, so you have one diet. When I say diet, just mean dietary intake. You have one diet that you get everything you need. And then you get the other one that requires supplementation. You cannot do veganism and get a full diet without taking supplements. And I've done veganism. Like this is not just me being like kind of crapping on veganism. I've done it and it made me very ill. There you go. All right. Three more. I'm taking the last three comments and then we're calling it quits. Leah. Hello, ladies. I'm joining late, but glad to both y'all are both an inspiration. Thank you so much. Can you share the uh, sure. Uh, just want to pop in and say hi to Team Meat. <laughs> team Meat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hi, Ellie. I'll see you tomorrow night also. Hi, everyone. My son is totally in sleep regression right now. This stream is on my Bluetooth headphones is saving me from boredom. <laughs> Sorry about that. Get, your, get yourself some audiobooks to listen to. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Let me see what I was my last audiobook I was listening to was Atomic Habits. And then I just read, totally not carnivore related, but for the first time, Neverwhere. I'm looking at the name of it by Neil Gaiman. I like that one. There you go. <laughs> I'm a big old nerd, so I listen to, you know, fantasy books. I, I, <laughs> I would too. <laughs> if I, I should get some more. Books, I should get some more. Yeah, the books I like physically read, Atomic Habits, Tiny Habits. I like the paper versions. I just listen to my nerd books because I listen to my nerd book when I'm trying to calm down and crochet. <laughs> this would be Aww. the body of a soon-to-be Highland cow. Oh, cute. Scott really quickly wants to show yeah, you his please. prize yeah. meat for tonight. Please, please. <laughs> wow, he that made, looks amazing. But we got to see is, Scott's face, not just the meat. Scott's face. Scott's oh, face. Scott. <laughs> is that roast? Like, looks it's amazing. Preparation? Yeah, that's a, I think it's probably just two ribs in there. Yeah, we so got ribs. rib roast on sale. By the way, y'all. Anybody in Washington and just check your sales. I'll say this before I forget. Rib roast is on sale again for $4.97 a pound through Kroger's Fred Myers is where we're at. So this week again. Nice. Awesome. That looks amazing. I really got to go eat also. It's eight o'clock here. <laughs> Last comment. So Ellie says, I'm a nerd too. She, uh, video games, anime. Oh man. I wish I had time. I, I'm a I'm a movie girl. I love movies. There you go. Um, I want to say thank you so much, Amanda. I'm so glad we finally got to talk. And by the way, it was also me. Like I went to the U.S. I was visiting family, so I'm glad we got to connect up. I hope we can do this again sometime. Yes, me too. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Hasta luego. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And.